Good talking to you, John. Thank you for being on with us. We'll get to the Bucci uh, overtime challenge in, in a second. Uh, what are you shaking your head about? You're very proud of the Bucci overtime challenge, are you not? No, it's it's a big goof thing that happened out of nowhere. It's kind of a, it always makes me chuckle when I look at trending topics on Twitter. And number one is what did Rihanna wear to the Met Gala? Bucci overtime challenges two and Snoop, Snoop Dogg's favorite ham sandwich. It's like right in the middle of all these pop cultural icons is the silly little Twitter game so involving you're not, the Stanley Cup playoffs. So you're not proud of it? Explain it to the audience. It was just a whim one day. Back in the day at ESPN, we'd, we, a game would go to overtime the first time we had hockey on uh, NHL tonight. We'd throw a dollar on the set, me, Ferraro, and Melrose. Pick a guy in each team to score the winning goal because our show would immediately follow the, the overtime playoff game at 2 in the morning on ESPN 2. And then if your guy scored, you pick up the two bucks, we start the show. If nobody guy scored, you put the dollar back in your pocket and start the show. So I just threw it on Twitter one day as a whim with this extremely – literal clunky hashtag Bucci overtime challenge. If I had a focus group, we probably would have come up with something shorter, but I think that's part of the charm of it. It's just a silly little goofy thing that happened out of nowhere. And I probably sold about a million dollars worth of t-shirts and hats and given away about a quarter of a million dollars. So it's just, it's all to me, it's just funny how it just kind of started out of nowhere. Why are you making faces, Billy? You made a million dollars on a joke. Pretty much, yeah. Between uh, the Booch Overtime Challenge and hashtag college hockey, um, selling hats and T-shirts from my attic and my basement uh, I, all by myself. I go to the post office just about every day, me in my bin of, of hats and T-shirts, drop them off. I package them myself. I do the people email me, hey, I got the wrong size. Can you get me a large or a medium? And and I go, okay, is this Bucci? Yeah, who else would it be? It's, you know, this, this is this is this is my this is my thing. This is uh, kind of my day job. You know, I have a night job. I got nothing to do during the day, so you know, it, it fills the day. <laughs> Has it become a pain in the ass, like to have to go to the, to, to the mailbox all the time, or to go to the post office? You know, that's not too. It, it's kind of been the circle of my day. I get up, I go to the I go to the post office, I go to the gym, I go to the supermarket, and I come home. I usually buy to eat. That's what I, you know, I usually buy the food that I eat that day. Maybe two days out, but that's pretty much it. So it's kind of I have a lap, and it's kind of it's a good routine. It's not that big of a deal. Now, yesterday I had thirty seven of them. To, you know, to bring to the post office and this thing right here. So, you know, I'm going to the post office with this thing because, you know, we have six overtimes in the last week and I'm at work, so I can't do it when I'm there. So they build up. So I'm here all day, you know, put, packaging 60 to 70 to 100 T-shirts because, you know, I get behind them on the road or I'm, I'm in Connecticut. I'm in Plymouth, Massachusetts right now. This is where uh, I usually am. Do you root for games to not go into overtime, all of them? So that Yes. <laughs> yes, I do, Dan. <laughs> yes, I do. When the Bruins had their goal, when the, when the Panthers had their goalie pulled, I go, please, no. This is more postage for me. This is more – Taking this broken bin to the post office. What do I hate you, them. What do you spend in postage a year? Well, I have, it, it's an ad, it costs about, like, postage is expensive. You know what's expensive also? I went to buy some deodorant the other day. It's like nine bucks for a stick of Old Spice now. Yeah. Holy mackerel. <laughs> Toothpaste, too. It's like $9. <laughs> well, now it costs, it costs me four bucks to mail a T-shirt. So, uh, so you figure we've had, what, I think 14 overtimes? I'm doing five winners now. I used to do 10. I'm down to five. So that's what, that's that's 60 times, that's 250 bucks so far, not that bad. That's just for the playoffs. So it's only during the playoffs too, I do this. I don't do it during the regular, it doesn't work three on three, five minute shootout stuff. So it really is built for the postseason. Have you seen the price of eggs, John? I mean, it's it's getting crazy out there. <laughs> See that eggs, but I do it, I have four eggs every day. Mm. And if you do the math, it's like 60 cents. Uh, it, no, it's like, what is no. it, nine bucks? I get 18 for eight, I get 18 for nine bucks. So, yeah. So, you know, what is that? It's like 40 cents an egg. It's like 30 cents an egg. It's it's actually less than that. So to me, it, to me, eggs, not a big deal when you break it down each breakfast. Breakfast is the cheapest meal. I don't know how Denny's makes money, but you know, breakfast is the cheapest meal to, to eat. What are you most appalled by when it comes to inflation? Is it deodorant or is it something else? It's deodorant, I think. I think it's the nine dollars for a stick of Old Spice. It used to be a dollar ninety nine. Right. <laughs> Did, did this just happened. <laughs> um, I did not have you. I don't know what I'm doing here. I did not have you as a tattoo guy. What do you got? Uh, you got any stories on the yeah. tattoos there? I, I got a lot. They're all, they're addicting. So you can just take the so shirt I off. One a, and I get one a year. So that's my thing. I like to think about what I'm going to get. And then I kind of 
you know, I pondered, I'm, I'm a, I'm a long-term thinker, like to kind of, you know, think about things and what, where, what, and then I, and I do it and then it's over. So this kids, like my kids handwriting from there, Hey, happy father's day, dad from, you know, 1999. So I got that. This is going to be actually, this is going to be my, I'm going to start putting like social security numbers and birthdays yeah. and girlfriends. This, this will be my dementia cheat sheet. That's what I call it when the, when I start the, you know, when I lose it, I'll have a little cheat sheet here in my arm. I'm surprised given so, how how jacked you are and the fact that you eat those four eggs I'm a day not jacked. because you want the protein. Please. I am surprised that you didn't take him up on his invitation to take your shirt off. I'm uh, I'm not jacked. That's I'm I'm overrated for come my jacked. Come on, jack. we, we see, come on, we see the neck, man. Seriously. Iron on. Temple, we'll be the judge of that. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> I am not. I am uh, maybe I'm you know they're skinny fat. I'm skinny jacked. Can you uh, put not, in? Can you put in perspective really for us? Can you give us uh, with the with hockey history in your corner? Uh, what does it mean? in terms of upsets that the Panthers did that to the Bruins? Statistically, it's an upset, of course, what, 43-point difference. But, like, I, I kind of look at things this way. Like, if, if we were going to put the Panthers and Bruins in my broken mailing bin right here, you know, put all the players in this bin. This bicep. Um, and, we, <laughs> and we had a draft, right? Who would be the first player taken in that draft? just from those two teams, right? Man. It would probably be... Pasternak? Pasternak or Kachuk, yeah. So I'll, I'll give you David Pasternak. But then Matthew Kachuk would go two, right? Who goes three? Probably Barkov, right? Man, he's been so bad at I like this game. He's I, I, I mean, well, I'd probably go Montour. Probably go Montour Very now. Very strange. Yeah, then, and then you'd go McAvoy before the series. You know, after the series, you'd go Montour. But before the series, then it would be McAvoy. But then it's like like people don't realize how good Gustav Forsling is. He'd be like the second-best Bruins defenseman. Um, you know, obviously Montour's had a great year. He's had, a you know, certainly a, a, a top two, top three guy. So if you just look at the roster and you go down, it's like, I don't know how the Bruins did it. It was like the biggest statistical mirage of all time that that they did what they did with that team. Are you thinking to yourself – that the Panthers caught a break because they don't have to see the lightning. Um, probably that might be a mini break. I think they're exhausted. They played so much hockey the last three, four years. They were ripe, um, familiar opponent, which makes it tough to beat the same person over and over again in any sport, any endeavor. So um, the, the Maple Leafs, you know, they might have looked at playing the Lightning again as a bad break for them, but maybe it was a good break. You know, they were familiar with them and, and they could make their tweaks. I mean, the whole trade deadline for Toronto was beating um, Tampa Bay because they knew they were going to play them in November. Like that, that matchup was set because the Bruins were so far in front of the second place team and there was no one threatening Tampa and, and, uh, and Toronto. So you knew that matchup was set so they could formulate their entire team team for that one series now we'll see if it works uh, against the panthers and moving down the line either the hurricanes or the devils but uh so in that way they were they were looking towards tampa so now for the uh for the panthers this this is another interesting series again we could do that draft theory again you know i don't know if the if the panthers would trade their defenseman their defensive core for toronto's defensive core i don't think they would they'd probably trade they'd trade their forwards of course but they wouldn't trade they, they wouldn't trade their d this is a matchup of the two best American hockey players, yes? And Austin Matthews and Matthew Kachuk, certainly on form right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Um, uh, absolutely. Kachuk, we need to get uh, the Keith Kachuk to produce more hockey players. Him and Chantel need to get start making babies immediately. They should think about future Olympic teams. They need to have 15 more kids. 15 more kids put it on the uh, poll put it, put it on the poll juju please do the kachuk yes. has to have 15 more <laughs> kids please yes keith and chantel um their daughter's an all-american uh, field hockey player at virginia she's like getting a full ride to virginia keith the chuck made 100 million dollars in his career his daughter gets a full ride to virginia his boys both make nine million bucks a year i mean talk about a guy who's just loving life Keith Kachuk. I'm like, goodness, Matthew signs with the Panthers. Who dad's knocking at the door every weekend. Hey, I'm here. Open up, Matthew. Dad's back. <laughs> Alex Lyon was the uh, first goaltender off the ice in today's practice. You think it's a good idea that Ooh. the Panthers go with Alex Lyon tonight? I think you need two goaltenders uh, in this day and age. I think um, I think it's a good way to start. You kind of reset. 
same thing as last series, see how it goes. But you don't want Bob's camp. You know, if you're, if you're going to run this for two months, which it takes to win a Stanley Cup finals, you can't have the same guy, especially someone had at his age. It's just, you know, the game is too fast now, too stressful for these goalies. There's no there's no rocking chair, you know, uh, games anymore like back in the day, back in the, uh, you know, the, the first iteration of the Panthers uh you know, pre lockout when you could just kind of make 19 save shutouts like Marty Brodeur, you know, you could be eating a burrito and smoking a stogie and make blocker saves and the devils would win three, one and another Stanley cup. But so, yeah, you need two goalies. So why not start on the road, give Bob a break to observe, take it all in look at these crazy Canadians. This is life or death for them. <laughs> and, um, and start with, start with the guy who went to Yale. Have you ever seen a more overwhelming power play unit than what Dreisaitl and Connor McDavid have put together in, in Edmonton? Nope. It's the best, best ever. I mean, let's face 34%. <laughs> it's like, it is unbelievable. I mean, Connor McDavid is, a uh, um, he, he's obviously the, the, the center of it all. He makes everything work. Um, but it's just a perfect collection of, of, of a power play now with the point guy, Evan Bouchard, who's a, who's a threat. Um, they're calling him the Brandon Montour, the Edmonton Oilers now, you know, he's a, uh, so he's a lot like him, right-handed shot, and Zach Hyman around the net. So it's, it's just a perfect power play, and it starts obviously with McDavid. But it does the five-man unit is uh, is the most dangerous in the game right now. Do you have an explanation for us why road teams are thirty-one and nineteen uh, in the NHL playoffs? Is it just the hockey's weird? It's always uh, historically, Dan. It's been like fifty-fifty until you get to Game Seven, then it then it tends it, it goes up a lot again. That's historically. I think now these kids have been playing big time international games from the time they're 12. And especially once they're 14, 15, you know, the U18, U17, U16 programs in Canada, in the US and around the world. These kids are traveling the world. They're playing uh, in hostile environments at a very young age. It's not high school hockey around the corner, or high school sports like we grew up with playing in front of 52 people. And then you somehow go to a small college, maybe then suddenly you're playing professional sports in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. And suddenly you're in the Super Bowl, you know, like in the 70s where some of these uh, uh, teams uh, uh, that went from high school to, to little college to then the Super Bowl. And then eventually, obviously, everything's catching up. College sports, obviously, is now professional sports. And high school and some high schools are professional Texas football and whatever and, and spots in Florida. So the kids younger and younger are getting exposed to this stuff and, and they like loud environments. You tell any, any college kid, I'd rather play it like for these NCAA hockey tournaments. We go to regional sites and sometimes attract 1200 people. They'd rather go to a North Dakota and play North Dakota in front of 10,000 for their first NCAA tournament game. than go to a neutral site in Grand Rapids in front of 800 people. They'll take that other environment every time. Put it on the poll, please, Juju, at Lebitard Show. Would Brodeur have shut you out uh, eating a burrito and smoking a stogie? Uh, thank you, uh, Bucci. Good talking to you, sir. Peace be with you.